10 Most Famous Crimes of the 2000s Sometimes, with the rapid growth of the internet and our exposure to so many people in so many situations, we can start to believe that people are getting crazier. Rest assured, though, people have been doing crazy things for a long time. To illustrate that point a little more clearly, we're going to be taking a look at 10 of the most infamous crimes committed in the early 2000s. Let's get started. Number 10. Jeffrey Skilling and Andrew Fasto Kicking off our list in the number 10 spot is the story of Jeffrey Skilling and Andrew Fasto. Compared to some of the other entries on this list, the crime these two committed is squeaky clean, but we are still including them because of the severity at which they pulled off their specific crime. The two were the epitome of shady and snarky businessmen who are just trying to fatten their own pockets, unbeknownst to almost everyone, when they were the CEO and COO of the energy giant at the time, Enron. The two worked together to lie to the board of directors and government alike, using every single loophole they possibly could to hide their debt leading to the loss of over $60 billion when the company filed for bankruptcy, one of the largest in corporate United States history. Number 9. The Virginia Tech Mass Shooting Coming in at number 9 is the Virginia Tech Mass Shooting, where Sung Hoi Cho opened fire on a male and female student as he was leaving his dorm room. The police weren't sure who they were looking for yet, so he wasn't apprehended until hours later, after he had opened fire again this time going on a rampage across multiple classrooms, killing 32 people and injuring even more. After this, however, he died from his own self-inflicted gunshot wounds. Number 8. Casey Anthony Next up on the list is the story of Casey Anthony. This is a story that got so popular when it broke in 2008, it's almost become pop culture, with multiple songs and TV shows referencing the incident. But let's not let that take away from the horrendous act it truly was. It's a long and confusing one, where Anthony sends the police on a wild goose chase to random dead ends in an attempt to hide the probable truth. She locked her child in the trunk and taped over her mouth. Her exact cause of death hasn't been determined, which likely played into the odd conclusion of the story, where Anthony was found not guilty of murder, but received a four-year sentence and had to pay a $4,000 fine for lying to police repeatedly. Number 7. Nadal Malik Hassan Coming in at number 7 on today's list is the story of Nadil Malik Hassan, a former army psychiatrist who had only been at his job for four months. Hassan arrived at a Fort Hood processing center used for medical screenings on soldiers preparing to be deployed and opened fire inside, killing 13 people and wounded more than 30 others. His rampage was stopped by civilian police, who fired back, and while he didn't die from the bullets, he is now paralyzed. The Pentagon interviewed Hassan to get a grasp of his mental state, where they observed a pattern of potentially violent behavior and extremist Islamic views. Number 6. Scott and Lacey Peterson Coming in at number 6 on today's list is the story of Scott and his wife Lacey Peterson. The day before Christmas in 2002, Lacey and her son were reported missing by Lacey's stepfather, who was prompted to report her disappearance after her husband Scott claimed he couldn't find her. Scott and the police danced around each other for a while, with the police already suspecting that he was responsible, and Scott only half cooperating. He would meet them where they asked, but would refuse to polygraph test. He showed up at the candlelit vigil for his deceased wife and son, but photos of him showed him smiling and laughing, a demeanor not expected from someone in such a traumatic situation. When the bodies washed up from the ocean and were DNA tested, it was over for Scott, who ended up getting arrested on a golf course where he had his brother's ID, four different cell phones, and about $10,000 in cash. Are you enjoying the video so far? We thank you for watching and ask you to leave a like and subscribe so we can keep bringing you great videos like this one. All right, now back to the list. Number 5. The Beltway Snipers Coming in at number 5 on today's list is the story of the Beltway Snipers terrorizing the Washington, D.C. area. The story begins on October 2, 2002, when a 55-year-old man was walking down a Maryland street and randomly struck in the head by a sniper bullet. Four more people died from sniper bullets to the head the very next day, quickly prompting the FBI to look into the situation. For whatever reason, the perpetrators were almost leading the cops to them calling into the FBI hotline and admitting that they had robbed a liquor store and murdered two women, despite the fact that only one woman actually died in that situation. 
in Alaska just one month prior. Investigating the situation produced fingerprints for the FBI to follow, which led them right to John Allen Mohammed and Boyd Malvo, a pair carrying around maps, walkie-talkies, a tripod, and of course, a Bushmaster sniper rifle. Mohammed was given the death penalty and executed in 2009, while Malvo faces life in prison. Number 4. J.C. Lee Duggard Next up on our list is the story of J.C. Lee Duggard. This story actually begins in the late 90s, when J.C. Duggard was headed to the bus stop, assuming she'd be getting picked up for school. Unfortunately, she never made it to the school that day. She was hit with a stun gun and had taken hostage by a couple, Nancy Bosanegra and Philip Garrido. Fast forward to 2009, and J.C. is finally given a glimmer of hope. While she was being held captive, Philip was assaulting her, even forcing her to have kids, two in total. This all occurred while she was forcibly moved between storage units, tents, and other random locations, with horrible conditions. When Philip took his daughters to a tour of the University of California, though, the police caught onto his seemingly nefarious intentions there and began an investigation, which led to JC being found. She had been extremely sheltered and conditioned, so she began to lie about the situation at first, before cracking and telling the truth. These days, she runs an organization called Just Ask Yourself to Care, meant to help people through life crises. Number 3. Steve Wright Kicking off the last three entries in the list is the case of Steve Wright. Steve Wright may be a common name, but the other one he earned for himself is a little less so, the Suffolk Strangler. As you can likely guess from this name, Steve went on a string of murders where each victim's cause of death was asphyxiation. As is common for serial killers, all of his targets were women, specifically sex workers. One of the particularly heinous details of Steve's case is the fact that his first victim was already three months pregnant at the time of her death. Steve is currently spending the rest of his life in prison, a sentence he received back in 2008. Number 2. Esnita Ruiz Catano Coming in the number two spot on today's list is the case of Esnita Ruiz Catano. Esnita earned herself the nickname La Depredadora, or of course, the Predator. She got this nickname because of her tendency to marry, convince her husband to take out a life insurance policy, and then murder him. Well, them, rather, as she did this three times before getting caught. The first time was back in 2001, and her last was in 2010. The insurance company noticed this strange series of disappearing husbands with policies that Ascenda was coincidentally the only benefactory of. So they began an investigation before paying her for the third incident, which led to her being caught and arrested. Number 1. Andrea Yates Finishing off today's list is the gruesome and depressing story of Andrea Yates. When her husband left for work on June 20th, 2001, he had no idea what kind of horrible situation he'd be returning to. Within an hour of him leaving, Andrea drowned all five of her children, an insane act that took the country and media by storm. In 2002, she was convicted of capital murder and was given the death penalty, but narrowly escaped it thanks to her retrial in 2006, where she was found not guilty by reason of insanity, due to her postpartum depression and multiple suicide attempts before the crime she committed. She resides in a mental hospital in Texas now. That brings us to the end of today's video. Which entry shocked you the most? Is there a crazy criminal story from the early 2000s that we may have missed? Let us know all about it in the comments below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and get notified for more. This is Toporo, and we're out.